Orthogonal tensors are extremely important for us in applications because they do not deform our vectors. They preserve the inner product, which means that lengths and angles are unchanged. So after an orthogonal transformation, the length of any vector remains the same and the angle between all two vectors remains the same. Uh, this is why this class of tensors is very important for us. In this video, we will see the precise definition and a number of important properties. So let us take a look. So a tensor Q is called orthogonal if it preserves the inner product. So that means QA inner product QB equals A inner product B. So you have x A and B, I compute QA and QB, and then the inner product between the original vectors A and B has to be the same as the inner product between the transformed ve vectors, and that for any vectors A and B. So what does this imply, this definition? Well, first of all, you can put a B equal to A over here, so you get a QA inner product QA, which is the length of QA squared. Well, QA inner product QA, because Q is orthogonal, has to be equal to the inner product of A with itself, so this is the length of a squared. So indeed, the length of q times a equals the length of a. And furthermore, let us take a look at the angles. The angle theta 1 between qa and qb, and an angle theta 2 between a and b. Well, we know that the cosine of this angle is qa inner product qb divided by the length qa and qb, so over here. We know this formula for linear algebra. Now, Q is orthogonal, so QA and our product QB is just A and our product B. And the length of QA equals length of A, and the length of QB equals length of B. And what we see over here is the formula for the cosine of theta 2, the angle between A and B. So indeed, th those angles are the same. So an orthogonal transformation Q leaves angles the same, leaves length the same. And now, we have a very useful theorem. This is probably the way you know it from linear algebra. Q is orthogonal if and only if Q transpose times Q is identity. So in linear algebra terms, uh, matrix is orthogonal if matrix transpose times matrix is the identity matrix. Now, how do we prove this? Uh, using tensors, well, we know the definition of a, a transpose a in our product T B equals B in our product T transpose A. That was what the definition of the transpose was. And then we put T equals Q and we choose the vector A to be Q times C. If we plug this into this formula over here, we get on the left hand side for A Q C and T B becomes Q times B. And on the right hand side we have our B. Uh, our T transpose becomes a Q transpose and our A becomes QC. So there we are. And now we can prove the theorem first from right to left. So if Q times Q transpose times Q is identity, uh, plug it in over here, then we know B in a product Q transpose Q times C is just B in a product C. And then we see using the expression we had already that QC inner product QB equals B inner product C, which is exactly the definition of orthogonality for Q. So that's from right to left. Now going to from left to right. So assuming that Q is orthogonal, we show that Q transpose K times Q is the identity matrix. So how do we do that? Um, uh, we use uh, again uh, an here the definition qc in a product qb equals c in a product b that's that q is orthogonal and then we use uh, the formula over here so this b in a product qt qc over here equals qc in a product qb equals c in a product b or b in a product c now if we uh, compare uh, left and right we see this is only true for all b and c if QT times Q is indeed the identity uh, tensor. So then we have 
that the left implies the right. So here we have the equivalence. Q is orthogonal if and only if Qt times Q equals identity tensor. And sometimes, often in the near algebra, this, this one is used as the uh, definition. However, we prefer to use the left part as definition. You can do both, of course, because they are completely equivalent.